Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. If this is your first time clicking on a video of mine, then I'm so happy that you did. Um, and my year of one is a low buy year. It is following on from last year, which was a no buy year for me. And it's just a way of me reintroducing shopping, spending and consuming back into my life, but in a controlled way that will hopefully stop my habits ever becoming as problematic as they were before I did my no buy year. So if kind of balanced content about conscious consuming appeals to you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. For today's video, we are going through how I spent my budget in the month of February. I just want to take a moment to say at the start of this, if I come across a little bit flat in today's video, it has just been a week here in the UK. I'm not going to go into details because I don't want to trigger people who are just trying to watch a video and escape and not think about it because whilst we have to acknowledge that there are horrible horrible things happening in the world and whilst we have to majorly fight for change to fix our systems we cannot fight for change if we're not functioning. At a point you have to take care of your mental health by taking that minute to come out of it and relax so that you can go back into it you know recharged and ready to to fight the good fight so yeah I want this video as with all of my videos to be a little bit of an escape from you know the absolute horrors of the world but at the same time I didn't really feel I could just make a video as if that wasn't happening because I feel like it is affecting me and it's probably going to affect how I'm coming across in this video so if I seem a bit flat that is why but regardless of that I hope you enjoy the video and let's get on into it. In the month of February I spent £10 on beauty service replacement items and that was on these two. So they were two for £10 in boots um, and it's the nice and easy 5WR warm medium auburn hair dye to obviously replace the fact I'm not getting to the hairdressers at the moment. I have used one of these so that is what is in my hair at the moment. I feel like it's all right. I do have to say I've gone on and on in the past about how if I could get the colour right I would probably like not get my hair dyed at the hairdressers again and I don't feel like I got the colour right but to be fair I feel like I do like this colour and I feel like if I had a friend who could come over and help me dye my hair I would probably be quite inclined to keep using these. Obviously social distancing and bubbles, I don't have anybody who can come to my house and dye my hair for me at the moment um, but I feel like that's something in the future that I might look into and last month I used the nice and easy root touch up which I definitely was happy with and again the colour wasn't quite right, we're on a bit of a mission to get the colour right but yeah I could definitely see me saving money on the hairdresser by doing my own roots and maybe trying to get like where I would have usually had like three appointments only have two kind of thing by doing that root touch up myself in the middle so I do feel like home dyeing is still something I am going to look at. I don't feel like I'm ready to say I've found the answer and I'm never going to go to the hairdresser again. I also enjoy the experience of going to the hairdresser to be fair which is is part of it but I definitely feel like this is all right and I am more than happy I've used one of them and I'm going to use the other one so you know and 10 pounds for two boxes of hair dye versus 150 pounds to get my hair dyed at the hairdresser financially it's a pretty good compromise. I didn't spend any money on beauty services obviously because we're still in lockdown and um, I didn't spend any money on miscellaneous services and I didn't spend any money on experiences. On eating out I spent £49.49 £49, so that was ordering takeaways. I don't feel like that was too bad, it's quite a lot of my budget. I do feel like if I was socialising properly I probably wouldn't be ordering in as much so I feel like as much as it's quite high I feel like when things do go back to normal and we are socialising again I feel like that will come down. So well eating out as a category won't come down but the takeaway I know looking at that that by eating out I mean takeaways um, whereas I know that will probably switch to sit down meals in restaurants as opposed to being takeaways but the amount I'm quite happy with. The amount I am never happy with is how much I spent on work lunches. 
So in the month of February, after saying in my January money diary how unhappy I was with how much money I'd spent in January on work lunches, I spent £91.31 pence on work lunches. Now that is annoying. What I'm hoping is that I feel like at the moment there has just been almost this sort of mentality of being like well what else are you spending your money on kind of thing. But I feel like we have provisional dates, it's all obviously subject to change, subject to numbers doing what they expect them to do with Covid but we have provisional dates in place for when things will reopen and when things will ease off and I feel like maybe once that happens something will kind of kick in hopefully, I'm really hoping in my head and be like no don't go to Modestons and spend 10 quid on a meal deal and an extra six pack of juice and some crisps like save your money because you want to go out for lunch at the weekend or you want to get your hair done or you want to get your nails done like all the things that I can't actually do at the moment will become an option again and I'm hoping when they are on the table that that means taking other things off the table will become easier. I am setting myself a goal off the back of this though. I feel like I keep saying oh I don't want to be spending that much on lunch at work but I feel like it's quite a vague statement that I'm making and there's not like a clear action that I can take there and I feel like it's also a bit unrealistic to expect me to spend nothing at work because for example like I'm not going to take cans of juice in my bag in and out of work every single day when I can go to the supermarket that is near my work and buy a 24 pack of Diet Coke and carry it across the road you know which is a cheaper than buying multiple you know, sets of individual cans that I would be able to carry in my bag be just a lot simpler in that I am only then having to carry them across the road rather than having to carry them, you know, from my house down to the train, on the train, on the subway, etc, etc, through my whole commute. So I feel like in my head I want to be spending zero, but I think what I, I think spending zero is actually not realistic. So I feel like in the month of March I'm aiming to save £50 of my budget and the best way for me to save that is going to be taking it off of my work lunches and I feel like setting that clear goal of saying I want to save £50 of my budget in March to roll it over into April is maybe going to be an easier goal than me just, you know, abstractedly saying I don't want to be spending as much money on lunches at work. Does that make sense? Even though the action to complete both goals would be the same, I feel like saying I'm trying to save £50 so that I can utilise it in April for something else is a clearer goal and an easier goal than me just saying I want to stop spending as much money on this. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Moving on to entertainment. So entertainment is one of the things that if you followed me last year wasn't in my budget last year. Well it was, books were in my budget last year. But my entertainment subscription services did not come from my budget last year which they do this year and they are taking up a lot of my budget. I spent £7.99 which I believe is odd, no, yes that's audible. I think I said this the wrong way around last time. So £7.99 per month is my audible. Eight ninety nine a month is my Netflix. Nine ninety nine a month is on Spotify. Then I spent five pounds on that was a lottery buy in thing at work, which is not that entertaining, but I felt like it had to come out of my budget because it was like not an essential spend, so I put it under entertainment. Um, and then I spent four pounds on my Patreon payment. I am a Patreon of Lena Norms here on YouTube, and I spent twelve ninety nine on a book. So all in all, in the month of February, I spent £48.96 on entertainment. Part of the reason that I am trying to save £50 in March is because I think what I'd like to do with entertainment, because I feel like that is like a fifth of my budget every month, basically on my subscription services. What I did do in February was I didn't pay Disney Life, which I then did miss, but if I'm honest, I don't know if I missed it just because I knew I couldn't watch it rather than missed it in that if I had had it I would have taken so many opportunities to watch it kind of thing. So yeah I did technically make a saving there by not paying Disney Life this month but 
even outside of that I feel like a fifth of my budget is basically going on streaming services every month before I've paid anything else and I think what I'd maybe like to do is look at the annual subscriptions to these things which can be a bit cheaper which would be a much larger chunk out of my budget one month but then means that that consistent fifth of my budget is not taken every single month and um, particularly you know in terms of when things reopen the more I'm thinking about this the more I'm like I have 250 pounds a month to spend so say it looks like by May things will be semi back to normal hopefully so if I've seen the month of May I wanted to get my hair done that would be £150. If I got my nails done, it would be £50. So there we are, £200 straight away across two services. I want to see my friends for dinner. See, we have one dinner out and say I spend £40. It's £240 before I've paid any streaming services, before I've bought lunch at work, before I have like done anything else. Getting my hair done, my nails done and seeing my friends that's basically my whole budget and that's not leaving any money for Netflix or Spotify or anything like that. That is where I'm kind of thinking actually maybe I'd rather pay, so I was looking mainly Audible for example, um, I think it's about £120 for a year subscription up front and maybe I'd just rather take that out of my budget one month, particularly in these current months where we're not going out and I'm not getting my hair done and I'm not getting my nails done and I maybe do have that little bit more excess budget that will be taken up by those services when things are open again and which I don't begrudge being taken by those services because I, I like having my nails done my hair desperately does need a cut like it's not that I begrudge that money for what it is but as a percentage of my budget it's a lot of money so if I'm not paying that at the moment I could be diverting that money into paying for some of these subscription services as an annual chunk which then means for the rest of the year I don't need to take a fifth of my budget before I've done anything else just to say that I'm paying for my subscription services. Generally the annual subscriptions are slightly better value for money like they kind of work out a little bit cheaper at price per month than paying it monthly so probably won't affect my budget all that much because if I paid like three months of a year out of this budget and then do it in like April or whatever it's then really next year before it saves me any money if that makes sense in terms of my budget runs January to December but in the overall scheme of life it will technically be saving me a little bit of money and I think it'll just make monthly budgeting a little bit easier to maintain. That's kind of where my head's at with my entertainment at the moment. I didn't spend anything on tools for hobbies this month. I spent £49.49 £49 on replacements this month which was weirdly exactly what I spent on eating out as well so that was obviously like the buzz number of this month. Um, so that broke down I spent £1 on this micellar water and then I spent £8.50 on this which is the OK Green Apple Foot Peel. I've spoken about these before but honestly like these are amazing. I'm really excited now that I filmed this that I can actually I'm going to use it tonight and my feet will peel and it will be amazing and yeah I'm very much looking forward to having smooth feet again so if you ever take any beauty recommendation from me it is these peels. They are so so good. It's Strange, after you use it, it kind of takes about a week or two to actually start peeling. It kind of goes long enough that you start going, that's not done anything and you start doubting yourself. And then just as you're like basically about to give up, it starts. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to use this. Then I spent £6 on this from The Ordinary and it's their Marine Hyaluronic Serum. So last year I did try The Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid with Vitamin B5 which I liked but it was quite sticky and one of you recommended this to me as an alternative and said it's less sticky which it definitely is. Their ultra lightweight hydration support with marine derived vegan water reservoirs. So yeah, my skin feels quite happy quite enjoying it it's definitely hydrating um, and I will continue to I will use it up and I could definitely see me repurchasing it so 
at six pounds this was a good alternative to my Kiehl's hydrating serum which is like the best part of 50 pounds pleased with that and then the last thing that I bought which I do not have to show you yet was 33.99 and it was a brush cleaning kit. So it's not been delivered yet, it's from Spectrum. Um, I will link it up down below, but it's basically a solid soap that has like a little silicone pad in the lid, which I'm, it seems quite well thought through, quite organized, quite excited to clean my brushes with it. Um, but also in the kit, you got a towel, which you can hang up and it's got elastics on it and you can like feed your brushes through it and it holds them and then you can hang it up and they will dry upside down. So. Basically our bathroom got redone, we had a plumbing issue so it became an essential thing that somebody had to come out and do it and then they kind of were just like look if we're fixing this we may as well just put the new bathroom in kind of thing so it was done but it was all socially distanced when they were in the house, we weren't in the house, all that kind of stuff. In the old bathroom I had that Real Techniques thing stuck up in the wall that was like a brush rack that in theory you could do the same thing with where it was up on the wall then you stuck your brushes into it and they dried upside down but basically it came off the wall all the time it was it had like a sticker on it and I mean basically from the day and hour that I got it I could never put more than two brushes on it or it came off that went down to one brush and it just kind of got to a point where it was just more hassle than it was worth to use it so I got rid of that and I purchased this towel thing because I thought right that's elastic and it hangs up and it's not like the weight of the brushes isn't going to pull it off the wall kind of thing so yes that is replacing that and I am very excited to have that because our new bathroom has like no counter space in it at all Um, there's more space in the bathroom because we've got rid of the counter space but it means the only place I actually have to dry brushes is on the windowsill which is not the most practical so I'm very excited for that to arrive. I did my brush brush laundry this morning and my windowsill is just like covered in brushes now and yeah they don't balance very well because it's quite a narrow windowsill and ugh, yeah I'm very excited about this towel. I'm not going to talk about it any longer because I feel like it's going to be like towel really really but I'm so excited for it to arrive. But it is not here yet so I do not have it to show you but those were my four replacements which added up to 49.49 so all in in the month of February I spent 249 pounds and 25 pence of my 250 pounds budget so I opened I should have said that at the start of the month I opened with a budget of 250 pounds exactly and I spent all but 75 pence of it yes I had some replacements to buy which hopefully I'm not going to have replacements every month but again similar to what I said in January it's an awful lot of money that I've spent that I've managed to spend in a lockdown month when I've not been going anywhere I've not been getting my nails done not been getting my hair done I've not been seeing people and it just makes me super aware of how much that money is adding up because basically if we had had the opportunity to see people this month I'd have to like <laughs> saws guys I can't afford to come out for dinner because I have spent all my budget. So it, it does, I'm glad I'm doing this because it's making me super hyper aware. But last year with my budget replacements and subscription services didn't come out of it. And I didn't think when I decided I had to include them this year that it would make as much of an impact as it has done within the first two months of the year. It's really quite scary, it's really quite eye opening. But yeah. As I said, my plan, because I am a bit like, oh my word, I'm spending so much money before I even feel like I'm spending money because I'm not doing anything with it, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not seeing people. It is, it's really quite scary. So that is why my plan is to save £50 off my budget in the month of March and to try and look at the annual options for my subscription services as opposed to paying them month by month so that it hopefully will be easier to just take a chunk out of one month's budget, pay it annually and then not have to see that frittering away every single month. And yeah, I am hoping mainly to save that by not buying lunch out at work. That's the main plan. <laughs> so that is where we are in terms of my budgeting life at the end of February. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for doing so. And I will see you in my next one, which I believe will be my perfume collection. I don't know if it's going to be my perfume collection or my February haul video. I feel like in a way doing my haul video and doing my check-in about shopping kind of makes more sense to follow on from this video because this is my check-in about budgeting and how I feel about it, which I feel like at the moment there's not a whole lot to report because I'm not actually making that many decisions so I don't have a lot of feelings but in a way that's making me be like I'm not emotional about my budget at the moment but this is just how the figures are coming down and I'm able to be quite logical and quite you know able to just look at the figures rather than being caught up in how I feel about what I'm spending if that makes any sense. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Whereas I feel like my monthly haul video is more emotional already. It's not that the video is emotional, but it's more, there's more meat to it because it's more about my emotional journey, which is a lot in the month of February. Spoiler alert. Um, but I feel like I also really want to get on with reorganising things. And I can't actually do that until I film my perfume collection. So, so it will be one of those two videos. You guys can let me know what you would like to see next, actually. Maybe that's the simplest way. I'll film both and you can pick what you want to see first. So yeah, let me know what you want to see and I will speak to you in that video, whatever it turns out to be. Bye.